Jealousy is ugly. It keeps those of us who struggle with it miserable. It causes us to act in hurtful ways, but don't forget who's in control. God is. He uses our actions to bring about his will, yes, even our ugly actions. He's powerful enough to influence the behaviors that lead to the realization of his plan. We can't screw it up on him. Are your plans being negatively affected by someone who's jealous of what you've accomplished, what you have, or what you intend to do? Don't worry about them. Just don't worry about it. The plans you have may be being disrupted, but God's are not. Trust him. Joseph was only 17 when his jealous brothers schemed his disappearance. Little did they know, but their negative actions were going to be instrumental in bringing about a future security for their family. In fact, all of the negative things that occurred in Joseph's life were used and had to follow a particular time frame, as long as it might have seemed, in order to bring about God's will. Nothing, no amount of enemy activity was going to change that. Remember, God's timing is perfect. Whether our present situation seems good or bad, flesh often can't seem to see beyond it. What's up with that? If circumstances seem bad, we become discouraged and we lose hope as if things won't ever change. If we're being blessed, we forget from where we've come or that the season may still change. Store up the times of goodness and faith in our hearts and feed off them during difficult days. When Christ is our center, highs and lows need not disrupt. There's an evenness, a peace about life, not in circumstances, of course, but in our spirit. Keeping the beauty of this relationship with Christ close to our hearts, be wary of who it's shared with, because Satan uses a lot of people to try to disrupt our trust in God. They trample and mock our faith, bring us down and allow jealousy to lead their actions. Joseph's master saw that God was with him and gave him full responsibility over his belongings so that blessings would be on his household as well. Later, Pharaoh entrusted all to him too, knowing that Joseph was a man of God so that his land would prosper during anticipated times of difficulty. When we entrust all to our Lord, we'll be strong and prosper when tragedies of life hit. We stand strong knowing that the will of God can't be overthrown. When we build our hope, though, on created things such as people, a spouse or a pastor, our own self-worth, fame, fortune, our jobs, we're going to crumble when difficulties strike. Pharaoh put his ring on Joseph, dressed him in fine clothing, and led him before the public, establishing his role to the people before sending him out to work on his behalf. You see, when we trust our Creator and His will, that presence is seen by others. He makes us sons and daughters, provides for us, clothes us in His glory for even our enemies to see, and sends us out to work on His behalf. There may be jealousy in the hearts of many as they see us sitting at the table set for us by our Savior. Don't let it bother you. After Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law from a fever, she got up and took care of everyone's needs. She worked. When God gave Joseph all the material things he could ever want through Pharaoh, he went to work. People likely thought him crazy, planning for a famine that wouldn't happen for another seven years, if at all. But God had given direction, and he acted on it. When we're taken into the kingdom of God, we come into a time of rest. However, Christ is now working through us. Be bold and obedient to his lead, whatever and wherever it sends, no matter how strange it might seem to others. When we choose to trust God during tough times, he rewards us accordingly. The reward is found in him. The reward is him. In fact, whatever our outlook is, God is reflected in it. For example, if we're merciful, we'll see God as merciful. If we're upright and pure, we'll see God as upright and pure. However, if we're difficult to deal with, mm -hmm, guess what? We'll see God as difficult to deal with. When God and his goodness and strength become our focus, we reap a reward of his goodness and strength. Whatever we see, judge, or believe is returned to us. So, guys, rather than looking upon others' errors and judging them, 
keep focused on Christ instead. If we choose to be condemning of others, we'll feel that same befall us as well. If you've spent your life believing you're justified in condemning another created being, let me encourage you to change that. The shift in abandoning this belief is powerfully freeing. Imagine that weight lifted off your shoulders. Who can understand our errors after all? Only God can. Let go of that control, which isn't really yours to have. When we are persecuted, it's God that should retaliate on our behalf, releasing us from the fight. Rest and allow him to deal with those who hurt and despise us. In this peaceful outlook, we've gained victory already. God's love for us restores our heart, enlightening our view of life. Focusing on Christ, filling with his Holy Spirit, cleanses us. But within our intimacy with him, we're filled with his goodness, cleansed and holy. The overflow of him becomes evident in our words and actions, which, in turn, are pleasing to our Father. There's a circle here that is being made complete, which we are a part of. Joseph acknowledged God, stating, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. We who are born again can see life in that same context. We are strangers in a land that issues out difficulties, but those struggles are part of a bigger plan, and we can have peace trusting God's will. Choose wisely, my friends, what's important, human attention or spiritual growth, because that which we desire will be given to us. When Christ is our desire, he fills us and has us do as he would. Trust his prompting and guidance, and what he needs us to do for others will be fulfilled. When human attention is our goal, we often become deceitful to gain it, and jealous of those who receive more. It's very ugly. Many will say they're of God, when in reality, the truths they share are distorted so that they become the ones followed instead. If the fruit of someone's ministry is followers of themselves rather than God, that fruit will wither. The disciples were often bowed down to and had to tell many that they were people under the same God not to be worshipped. How many of us seek that kind of following or attention? In a social media world, we're looking for attention and a following. Look, right here, right? Branding ourselves in the hope of rising in popularity, preaching and hoping to be heard by many, succumbing to the to the desire of validation and value based on numbers. Value is being placed where it shouldn't, and the focus of many is on other created beings rather than Christ. We need to keep pointing people towards the Lord, guys. Jesus broke down barriers of rules, etiquette, culture, and religion. He declared that what God has cleansed shall not be cast aside. We are to be open to his wisdom and direction. God does not acknowledge human boundaries, but comes to any who accept him. He told us to preach, to testify that he is the judge. Sin separates us from God, but Jesus died for those sins and took away Satan's power to keep us in bondage. If people believe in him, they'll be forgiven their sins. This message is meant to be heard. There is no distinction between sinners and law abiders, believers and non-believers when we come to the Lord. He forgives all the same and gives the gift of his Holy Spirit to all just the same. Jealousy. Oh, jealousy. It plays a heavy role in this earthly life. We struggle under its weight from our own points of view and also from that of others toward us. However, when we focus on Christ, jealousy can become a non-issue in both directions. When we are content in God and his love for us, others' jealousy is really meaningless. If we're adorned in the glory which God gives, that's between us and our Lord. If others are jealous of it and taunt us, that's between them and God. We, on the other hand, have no thought of jealousy when Christ has filled us. We cheer for others. We cheer for others who are blessed by him and are content with what he has provided for us. It's such a refreshing way to live. Welcome to freedom from jealousy.